I came to give you a, a different introduction. Uh, intro, we in those invisible windows. Intro, we in those invisible windows. Intro, we in those invisible windows. Intro, we in those invisible. Intro, we in those invisible windows. Geeky Nintendo, J Swill, we will window. Hi now, crescendo, don't mess with my Kendo. Hermes with the info, inherent build inflow. I'll topic her on from dusk until dawn. Brains over brawn, look up to the Sean. Wait for my spawn, you rushing like Vaughn. Remember, so gone, destiny was drawn. We sat on your porch, you know. Red on the green sea in Portugal. Had corn rolls with corner rolls. Mama asking as if we know, like if we know. Kicking back Taekwondo. Couldn't really play on PS4. Any man, Danny ran Ghost Alive. Took three gears to put in drive. It took three years to take it outside. Hey, when babies were quiet, hey, when ladies would lie, hey, when Navy took Uncle Malik from my eyes. Sigh, sigh, oh me, oh my. Super Smash Bros, button mashing pro, Evan and Ethan. Michael Jackson glow, Carmike, Malco, snuck my snacks and no. Witness in the tavern, someone put an axe in Mo. Didn't ask for much. Still and revealing, not really bad with luck. Focus, feeling the hill and sitting around, chilling with Krillin, living, dealing with squirreling, work for the food that we reeling. Sonic, slow down, slow down, ten toes down. Ten foes, five blows, it's a showdown, whoa now. Undertaker, it's a ghost town, hose down, for Renda or get bowed down. Be on the test, still blessed, there's bees in the best. Oh yes, this Z and the zest, had to eat and get dressed. Bet it's east or the west, like it's knees to your chest. A, B, C, one, two, three. G, E, C, E, Z, C. Pray for the B, M, G, W, C, E. And with that being said, my name is Christian Ezel, everybody. We really, really appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, we are Southern Word. We have quite the spectacle going on for you guys tonight. Uh, we got a nice lineup. And without it being said, uh, my name is Walter Christian Ezel, and we hope you enjoy the night. So, first on our lineup, we have Ares. I was trying to describe you to someone the other day. And I mean, I couldn't just say, well, she likes history and she has locks. I mean, I couldn't just say, well, she looks like that black girl over there. I mean, I guess you're like how black people felt walking out of Black Panther. You're like how barbecue smells on a hot July day. I mean, sometimes you just feel like how cinnamon buns smell in the summer. You're just like the light at the end of my tunnel. You are the breath of fresh air I need. You're like how chocolate tastes on a churro or how Nefertiti felt when she married the Pharaoh. I mean, sometimes you just feel like a djembe in the midst of sudden silence. You're like a snowflake in the middle of a thunderstorm. I mean, I guess what I could have said was sometimes you feel like how home should feel. I guess what I should have said was, you feel like a bride on her wedding day. You feel like the pauper that became a princess. I mean, sometimes you just feel like how air feels to humans. You know, it burns a little at first, but then you ever wonder how you ever lived without it. I mean, I guess I should have said, you're like the air that we all breathe. You're always there, but no one ever seems to appreciate you. I mean, I guess what I should have said was I haven't become her yet. Dear skinny white boy, I think I'm in love with you. I mean, the curly hair, the too tight jeans, the disregard for basic hygiene, it is to die for, really. What's that? Of course I want to see your skateboard tricks. 
Can you do the one where you ollie over responsibility? Kickflip commitment out of the question? Wow, I can tell you've been practicing. Um, are you doing anything tonight? No, no, I get it. Your music comes first. Let me know if you need a desperate voicemail or some wilted roses for the album cover. I mean, I still have the ones you gave me. Do I want to hear your breakup playlist? Oh my god, I would love to. I wonder what mine will sound like. Babe, is that a tattoo on your shoulder? What does it say? Emotional availability? Oh, no wonder I've never seen it. Wait, <laughs> let me get this right. You want to take me on a date. Finally, we can drive around in your chipped Chevy, go 50 and a 25 because you don't understand how limits work. Babe, chill, I'll pay gas. We can stop at the 7-Eleven you always go to, the one that never refills the Slurpee machines. And it fits you so well. I mean, we all know how much you love convenience. <clears throat> Let me set the scene. The sun setting. The windows down. My hair in my face. <sighs> Romance. Me wearing your oversized hoodie and trying to ignore the smell. You chewing Nicorette. Devouring a cigarette, I know it's just a metaphor, but whoa. Addiction looks so good on you. And maybe that's why at the end of the night, you finally tell me you're in love with me, recreationally. After that, you'll drop me off at the laundromat by my house and promise to pay me back. I'll watch the washer turn and wait for you to text that you don't know how to love me. You didn't mean to hurt me, again. And I get it, love, really, I do, but I'm getting a little tired. Tired of this breed of boys who pretend not to feel pain, who use trauma and daddy issues to excuse their actions, gaslight girlfriends, lie to lovers. Congratulations, you've mastered well-met manipulation. The same boys afraid of becoming their fathers feed quarters into this toxic machine and call it loyalty. Do you know how many girls in tears have told me they deserve this? How many think this is the only way someone will love them? So believe me, I appreciate the playlist and the emotional damage, but I am done with washing machine loves that accept quarters and reject commitment. I'm sorry it had to come to this, honest babe, but I'm afraid you're going to have to do your own damn laundry. Try again. We'll try. <laughs> it's okay, guys. It's all right. Chris, yo. Oh. I'm not the typical typical Tyler off the porch. I bring corrosion, exploding off when I light the torch. I'm not a bored. He cordially ain't locked in my core. I'm sick and tired of all that I speak. And furthermore. Beating the horses, the dangers when they're going up Though it's important, ejecting the situation like abortion Is getting annoying, but I don't endorse it This is the problem, y'all reinforcement And I am the artist who's painted the portrait that did you to change And I just made a fortune, believe I'm exposing But that word is spoken, the fact of the matter is what I'm imposing Fake friends in my potion Got a couple open doors that ain't closing But a couple closed door will open You said bro, and I say yeah, broken You told towards my token Got a couple plans to set in this motion Got a couple minds to set in explosion Cut the crap, cut the crap Quit the smack, quit the smack. I'm not your bag, not your bag. So fumble that, fumble that. What a jack, what a jack. Cause you brought me back, brought me back. Now I'm about to crash, about to crash. I'm about to crash. You say that you know me, I move like a mama. Now RP Kobe, you putting these words in my mouth to insult me. I'm constantly choking, cause that ain't the OT. The HYPOC's a right to the OMI. And now I'm a top tier and I'm feeling OP outside of the beef like a war ravioli. Don't come playing games like you're trying to control me. I'm speaking on dummy, so let me speak slow. They expected to rap about something that had to do with a big troll. But they're hearing it now, they're thinking like, wow, I mean, holy moly. 
Look, I'm tired of bazzing ass. You thought there was business, but that's just a play. I'm starting to win this a glorification like Barbara Barbara after she won't behave. I'm starting to pick up your attitude. Ain't no one mad at you, you just a whole parade. That's why I witnessed your outbreak. The ain't too like, are you okay? You probably didn't even get that, but it's alright. Sit back. Understand that this rap ain't a diss track. Don't mismatch. AL is coming soon. This ain't a lie like you say. Amateur loading tune shit. Yeah, I'm sorry for the way. That was Christian. And um, Effie Hauk and um, Eris Aaron kicked it off for us. I'm, I am Benjamin Smith, the executive director, and I just thank the Tennessee Commission on Children and Youth for having us back every year and for you guys seeming to want us back. So thank you for that. I don't get up here every year, but every once in a while I do get up and just say, in addition to these folks that we're celebrating and see here, we put writer and music mentors in schools and community organizations. And we serve 6,000 youth in eight counties. Last year, uh, uh, urban, rural, and suburban counties, and wherever we go, this matters and means something to young people having the platform and the opportunity to express themselves and say who they are. Um, and a lot of the folks who we impact the most, you will never see on a stage of this size. We might see them for just three days in a classroom. Um, for that reason, we're going to Bradley County, to Bradley Central High, and working with their whole freshman class this May. So to know that underlying this is a, an extremely powerful tool to work with young people. And we've been doing it for 11 years, and I feel, I feel like we still have this secret, even though we've been getting such a great reception. So I just want to keep reminding you of that secret, is this is a wonderful tool called Southern Word. And we're going to have two more. We started doing music, too. Do you like the music added into it? <clears throat> so we don't do music just to do music. We do it because we're about writing and speaking, but we're about projecting positive youth identity in the face of media that's often projecting very non-positive messages and mapping them onto our young people, right? And so we're trying to equip young people with all the tools they can to fight back and express who they really want to be and create the path that they really want to take. So that's what the music is about. So you're going to hear um, Mari Fields next. He's going to do a poem, and then Carmen Ridley is going to close it out. Um, with the song, and I just want to thank our school partners because we can't do this without our teachers, MLK and Overton High School, and Hume Fogg's represented here. Cool. <laughs> Clap for Mari Fields. Thanks so much. Hi. <laughs> My doctor tells me I should smile more with a pretty face like mine. His hands are cold medicine pressing into the parts of me I already knew were broken. I think he's trying to fix something. I told him my mouth was malignant, curving into rotten teeth and flesh and blackening skin every time I twisted my tongue to say I love you. When he asked me to show him for a second, I had forgotten how to. When I came in the next day with the terrible news of my pus-like parasites protruding through my stomach and how crushing food became hard to do the moment I realized I fall for kind smiles easily. He checked my inner workings for butterflies. Ding! And when I had a heart attack holding hands and I felt my whole heart stop on command, I commanded him to do something to stop it. But apparently you can't cure everything with medicine, so I was stuck with pretzeling fingertips around my palms. I must have had leprosy by the time I decided to let go because I didn't want this feeling to spread. My doctor asked me if I was a hypochondriac. I told him I was a Capricorn and he sent me to this therapy thing and when I went, my diabetes cut through my circulation reminding me why I'm not even worthy of something fatal. When my therapist told me about love, I went to my doctor and I told him to examine every inch of my body for it and get it out. This terrible disease. To my surprise, he told me there was nothing to be found. 
And I, I asked him if the problem was the blocking of blood to my brain, if the problem was the stroke of pain and pleas and partially packed in promises. He just told me he was sorry for my loss. I looked in the mirror and I said, please, uh, like, what was the problem? I mean, it, it can't all be fake, right? I mean, I kept wanting that itching without a place to scratch it, that scratching for cute kisses and midnight talks on the phone. Oh my God, no, you hang up. You hang up, babe. Oh my God, you're so adorable. You hang up. No, you hang. Hello? I mean, I can't be pretending if I really want it to be real, right? It, it can't all be in my head if there's nothing in my head but tumors filling my brain with disease and pestilence, reminding me why I'm not even worthy of something fatal. I mean, I look at my doctor and I tell him, please give me some sort of surgery that can fill me with something, anything. My mirror can't answer that question with an answer in time. My therapist, he reminds me that nostalgia is this catchy, infectious tune that I can't get out of my head. It'll keep replaying and replacing until it'll pull a hole in my stomach and burn, until my asthma can choke on it like glass, until it can do nothing but cough it up. But he reminds me, I can't forget the lyrics, but I can change the melody. He tells me that coughing is a sign I'm still fighting back. I realize I kept writing about love because I hadn't ever felt it yet. And I tell my doctor I'm healing and I smile. Hello.